The Junkers Ju-87, also known as the Stuka, was primarily employed by the Luftwaffe, as well as the air forces of the Axis powers, was one of the most effective dive bombers of the Second World War, and certainly the most touted aircraft of the entire conflict. It is considered a milestone in the history of wartime aviation. Designed by the German company Junkers, it went into production from 1935 until the end of the war. The Stuka was by far the most important tactical bomber fielded by the Luftwaffe. It was immediately recognizable by its fixed undercarriage and famous, inverted seagull, wing. The dive attack proved ideal for hitting moving or difficult targets such as bridges, fortified positions, tanks or ships. This technique allowed exceptional accuracy on small and medium-sized targets. The fundamental distinction between conventional bombers and dive bombers lies in the fact that, while the former release bomb clusters over a wide area during horizontal flight, the latter head vertically, in a dive, towards the designated target. As they approach the target, they drop a single bomb achieving significantly higher accuracy. One of the operational shortcomings of a dive attack against a terrestrial target was in fact the violent upward vertical acceleration, over 6 grams, experienced by the pilot during the dive phase. This acceleration pushed the blood from the brain towards the lower extremities, causing the pilot to faint, usually at the moment of bomb release. The German designers, after an accident in which an entire formation of Ju-87s perished, because they had performed the dive too late, adopted a system of automatic retraction of the tiller, to be activated before the dive, capable of bringing the aircraft back to altitude after the attack, even in the event of the pilots fainting, who had plenty of time during the ascent to regain his senses and thus control of the aircraft. On the advice of Colonel General Ernst Uday, sirens were mounted on the Stukas, known as, Jericho Trumpets. The piercing and threatening sound of these sirens was activated during dive attacks by aircraft. This tactic was intended to generate terror and panic among the opposing soldiers, and the civilian population, contributing significantly to undermining enemy morale during air operations. The Stuka was loved by its crews for its robustness and by Wehrmacht soldiers for its great precision, being able to hit targets as small as a tank or casemate with its bombs. The armament consisted of three 7.92mm machine guns. The drop guns were various combinations of 50, 250 or 500 kilograms bombs totaling 1,800 kilograms under the fuselage, or under the wings. The G version was equipped with 37 mm anti-tank guns. In September 1939, for the Polish campaign, the Luftwaffe deployed 219 Stukas, which had astounding effects. The Stukas attacked 11 minutes before the official moment of the German breakthrough and achieved complete success. Also making the aircraft legendary were brilliant achievements during the French campaign. The Stukas, commanded by General Wolfram von Richthofen, made numerous sorties a day, inflicting astonishing destruction, terrorizing the French defenders with its combined effect of noise and precision. However, the lack of escort for German bombers meant that losses were heavy in the event of an attack by enemy fighters, as evidenced by an incident near Sedan on 12 May 1940, when six French Curtis Hawks shot down 11 Ju-87 without suffering any losses. It soon became clear that the Stukas could only achieve success with almost total air supremacy. During the Battle of Britain, the dive bombing division suffered heavy losses. In reality, the Stuka was vulnerable, slow and unmaneuverable, making it easy prey for the RAF's fast fighters in the absence of adequate protection. 
Although the Stuka suffered heavy losses from the British and Russian air forces, the Ju-87 remained an effective weapon under air supremacy conditions, so it underwent constant upgrades in the D and G variants, and the engine and armor were upgraded. The new models were widely used on the Eastern Front and in North Africa. Although constantly updated, the Ju-87 remained an effective aircraft, but unable to defend itself adequately against opposing fighters. Its contribution underlines the limitations of the Nazi Blitzkrieg strategy. More than 5,700 examples were built in a dozen versions, which fought on all fronts.